Hi, hello. Uh, I, I want to dialogue a little bit about product backlog. What is a product backlog? It is a wish list of features that may or may not get into the product. Think of this particular YouTube channel that is pmricampus.com. Uh, so I want to release videos. Uh, I'm covering Pimbok, I'm covering uh, Agile, Scrum, uh, sometimes advanced product management. Now every week, every week I want to release a set of videos and I need to plan. So in this case, these videos are my products or uh, are my features. So each video can be considered as a, as a feature. I need to plan. So now if I have to tell the audience well in advance, you know, what are all the videos that is going to be released week after week, I need to do a lot of planning. So these things gets into the product backlog. So whenever I conceive the idea of a new video that gets into my product backlog. And when this product backlog stops growing, that means I'm losing interest in my YouTube channel. Uh, so how do I really start now? Always I have this dilemma like, so you know, I am dealing with PMP. I am dealing with Prince. I am dealing with Agile. Then product management. So these forms, uh, these are my epics. Epics means very large user stories, which I will not be able to estimate because under PMP, we have 47 processes coming under this PMP itself. And under Prince2, similarly, several things coming under Prince2. And under Agile, I have uh, Extreme Programming, Scrum, RUP, TDD, multiple flavors of Agile. And then uh, if you take Scrum itself, which is just one flavor of Agile, I have uh, I need to have a video on product backlog. I need to have another video on user stories, another video on estimation. So these epics are a high level, uh, high level user stories, which I am unable to estimate. And if I have to estimate them, I need to break them further into uh, smaller user stories. So always we start with uh, epics. You take a product, the product owner thinks about the, the major things, functionality it must do, and they are epics. And then these epics gets broken down further into uh, user stories. So it is, a, it is a good practice to think about now while writing the user stories, always we have this dilemma of how deep or how elaborate these user stories must be. Initially, I also made the mistake of uh, writing the user stories to the you know, screenshot level and sometimes give the table structures, uh, which, is, which is actually wrong. Uh, so user stories, again, it is at a high level. So to write better user stories, it is always think about the, the people who are using or the personalities who are using the system. In the sense, as a user, what are things I'll be doing? As a system administrator, what are things I'll be doing? As a super user, what are things I'll be doing? As a manager, what are things I'll be doing? So maybe I can say, as a user, I want to log into the system. For that, I need to register myself at the system. Or as a manager, I want to see the time logging of my team. Or as a manager, I want to see a pie chart of uh, the sales figures based on uh, different accounts and different geographies. So we need to give only that much to the uh, development team during the planning meeting and the user stories are a means of dialoguing with the team. It's not that you write everything very clearly into the user story and then go and delegate to the team. So we go with the idea of a feature with some amount of clarity and then uh, 
we start the conversations with the team uh, during the planning meeting and the conversations are also captured and during the planning meeting we have more clarity about these user stories and these dialogues continue throughout the sprint. It's not that the product owner just delegates and vanishes to come back for the uh, review meeting. So you sit along, you work along, the product owner and the development team work together in building the feature. That means there is room for conversation during the sprint as well. So uh, we spoke about uh, the, the product backlog, which is a wish list of features. And generally, what I found as useful is, okay, I always think of epics, the high level things, and then break them into smaller chunks. Uh, uh, and it is useful to, is useful if you think about the personalities you are using the system, and then you, you, then it is easy to visualize the user stories. Like as a user, I want to log in. As a user, I want to make a payment. As a manager, I want to track this. So that way it helps. So the primary focus of this video was to explain what is a product backlog. So as a product owner, I just log the wish list of my features into the product backlog. This product backlog is allowed to grow uh, extensively. And we say that when the product backlog stops growing, that is the end of the product or the end of the product owner, one of it is true. Thank you very much.